Hello and welcome to episode 44 in the Databack tutorial series for version 1.21 and higher. We're going to be doing an item that you can right click to charge up or hold the right click to charge up. And once a certain time has passed, it does something. And if you let go of right click before, it resets. Okay, now I have very little time today. And so there's a huge thank you to Gail Sergi because uh, he sent me the commands for this. And I probably wouldn't have had time to get a video out today if he hadn't. So it's very, very helpful. Let's go crack straight on. I'm going to go over to VS Code. Here we have our basic empty data pack. If you don't know how to get this far, watch episode one. And let's create some folders and files. Well, we're going to need an advancement. So inside my namespace, let's create a new folder, advancement. And inside there, I'll create a new file. I'll call it magic wand charging.json. I'm not going to put anything in there now, so it's going to be unhappy for a bit. I'm sorry about that. Now inside my function, so inside namespace, inside function, new folder, I'm going to put all my files into wand. And let's create some new files in there. We'll have um, something to do when the wand is charged. And we'll have a function for when the wand is charging. And we'll have a file for when the when the player stops pressing right click. So we'll discharge, we'll do a discharge check. We'll check. Now we need to give the player the wand, so let's do a, a give wand in there as well. Ooh, well I have you as an underline, please. I'd like to stick to the same conventions. Okay, and we've got a load already. So let's go straight on. We'll do the load. We need a couple of scores. The scoreboard, objectives, add, and I'm going to have a magic wand. And this one, it will be the current charge on the wand. How long have I been holding down? Right click. That'll be a dummy. And we'll copy and paste that, stick it in there. And we'll have a timestamp. Now this will be used for checking if the player stops right clicking. We'll save that. I'm not going to put any comments as I go along unless there's lots of stuff. So I might put a few. In the downloadable version, it'll be fully commented. So let's get rid of load. Load is done. Let's do, I was give one. Here we are on give one. That makes sense next. Let's give the executor. You could use any item you'd like. Well, I just probably best use an item that can't already be eaten or something. Or right click to use. I'm going to use a blaze rod because I currently have like Matica installed so I can't use a stick without changing any settings. I'm going to give it an item name and we'll say equals apostrophe apostrophe inside the apostrophes two speech marks and I'm just going to call it magic wand. It will need some custom data this is probably the most important bit equals and we'll say in the magic wand is true. I need to give it a food component so we can start to munch on it so we can check our right our right click food. If you're in later versions, I think in 1.2, 1.2, they changed this slightly. So be aware that the food is being split up into food and consumable, I believe. I'm in 1.1 though. Uh, in here, nutrition. So if I, if I do eat it, well, I'm not going to eat it because it's going to take a million seconds to eat and I'm not doing that. But I don't want to get any any nutrition and I don't want to get any saturation. I want to always be able to use it. So can always eat equals true. And how long will it take to eat? One million seconds. OK, let's save that. Give wand is done. I suppose let's pop over, do a little bit of reload. This button here is just running the reload command. And let's do function. Give wand. There's my wand. Let's do a data get from an entity. Myself selected item. I can see that it's got a name. Yeah, it's got the food component. It's got the custom data. Yeah, looks good. Okay, let's go back. Right now we need an advancement so we know when we are right clicking. So let's make our advancement. Let's pop over to Misode. Here, are, here we are, in advancement generator. Let's give it a criteria name, um, something that makes sense. So I suppose charge magic wand, that sort of makes sense. Let's open up that. 
what's its trigger going to be? Well, I'm going to be using an item. So using item. What are the conditions? Conditions are item, item, string. It is, I'm using a blaze rod. So let's put that in there. Blaze rod. Okay. And let's do a predicate check for some custom data. We'll add that. And the custom data will be a... Oh, hello. Does that change a bit? Can we put an object in there? Do I need object now? Magic wand true. Add that. Ooh, it looks a bit... No, it looks a bit funny to me. I'm not going to use the... I'm going to use the one that I know then. Predicates. We're going to check the custom data. Add that. I'll keep it as a string. And in here, I'll put my, don't capitalize it. That's a naughty habit. Magic wand. True. Okay. And I think I'm going to have to change those little, one day I'll be able to do this without having to edit it. But we're going to do a little bit of changing on that at some point. And let's do some rewards. The rewards is it's going to run a function. And I'm just going to put placeholder here because I'm going to type that in VS Code. Okay, so if I use an item that is a blaze rod that has magic one true, run this function. Copy that. Pop over, go to our advancement, and pop it in. Okay, placeholder. Let's change the function first. Uh, the reason why I put placeholder is because instead of typing it all out, it's so much easier just to have the autofill. Uh, and we will have charging. Now, I'm going to check if that's right, actually. I think that might write. Let's leave that as it is. Because I've got to, I've got to learn myself one day, haven't I? Okay, so we use this. What do we run? We run charging. Let's go to charging. The first thing we'll do is revoke the advancement. Revoke. Well, that's not how you revoke an advancement. You advancement revoke at s only. Start typing my namespace. Okay, let's get rid of that capital E there, so it doesn't bother me. So we'll revoke the advancement, and then we'll just say hi, save. Let's go back to Minecraft, not to Missode. Go away, Missode. No, don't go away, Missode. You're unbelievably helpful. <laughs> don't go away. Okay, let's right click. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah. Okay, that's working. Let's pop back. Well, we don't want to just say hi. That's pointless. So here we will. Actually, we will do a little bit of commenting, I think, just to list the things we want to do. So first we'll um, increment charge score. And then uh, if score is, I know, certain level, then run the function. Um, we will save the game time to player. Increment the player's game time. Well, actually, let's change this time stamp and we'll save the game time to players time stamp. Look at that spelling of the word increment. I should leave it because we're not here for English. We're here for commands. And then once we've done that, although we're not actually, we are increment. We, we add two to the players time stamp. And then we will check if player releases the right button. Okay, increment the charge score. So we just want to add one to that. Scoreboard, players, add S, charge one. If the score is a certain level, execute if score at S, magic one charge, matches let's just do you can pick any time you like i'm just going to pick 50 or higher then we will run function charged so if it reaches 50 pool will do charged save the game time execute store result as a score on the player running the command into the magic wand timestamp run we will time and we will query the game time. 
Then we'll add two to that. Scoreboard players add s timestamp two. And then we'll do a check to see if they let go of the button. Schedule a function discharge check to run in two ticks append. Save. Okay, bye bye charging. So what happens when you well actually let's just pop over and see what we've got. Reload. We should just have our score going up. Let's do scoreboard objectives set display to the sidebar charge. And if I right click, let go, right click, let go, right click, let go. Cool, that's going up. Let's go back into charged. Let's do discharge first. Right, discharge. We will store game time to fake player timestamp. And we will check if players timestamp matches fake players timestamp. Okay. Execute store result. Execute store result as a score. Let's have a fake player. Just call them this. I'll do. We'll store into their magic one timestamp. We will run time query get the game time. Now, if I'm not holding right click, I will not be adding two. So here, if I am right clicking, I'm adding two. So my timestamp will not match the fake player's timestamp. But if I'm not holding right click, I'm not going to be adding two and my timestamp will match. So let's do a check to see if they match. Execute as all players if score at S my timestamp equals the fake player this their timestamp. Then we will run scoreboard players reset the player timestamp save let's go back do a reload okay i'm not holding let's run let go run let go nothing happens cool it's exactly what we didn't want to happen so <laughs> what have we done uh let's go to charging okay save the game time we are doing that we are adding two Schedule function one discharge check. Yeah. Execute as. Well, I've put all players there. No, that. Yeah, that should be right because we have no context, so that should be all players. Oh, we've put at S. That should be okay because we're executing as all players. Well, here's me thinking this was going to be a quick one. Come on, how do we solve this? I always just stick a thing in there and see what happens. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay, so when I press the button, it's going up and it's saying hi. So it does seem to be in there. Save. Execute as all players, if score S, magic one timestamp equals this magic one timestamp. We got this name correct here. Yeah. Oh, we're resetting the timestamp. Oh. Ah. So check my timestamp against the player's timestamp. And if they match, we reset the charge. Oh dear me. Such a silly mistake. Think the things you do when you're in a hurry. You make the silliest mistakes. Okay, let's go back. Of course, it's not going to reset the charge. And we'll run it. And I let go. Ah ha ha. I run. I let go. I run. So you can see my score's going up. And I let go and it resets. Cool. Okay. Now let's pop back. So we've done discharge check. We've done charging. 
All we need left is what is going to happen once you reach the score. Um, so let's do do whatever you want here. I'm just going to say, poof, my magic spell has gone off. Or maybe I've teleported or something's happened. And I'm going to reset the score as well. Reset the charge. Scoreboard players. Let's see if we can remember to actually reset the charge this time instead of the timestamp. And we'll save that. Okay, let's go back to missode for some reason. There we go. And now I hold it down for 50 ticks. And we should go poof, my magic spell will go off. And I can keep holding it down and it'll build up again. Poof. So you could use this for some sort of devastating attack. You don't want the player going click, 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 and firing it off really fast. You want them to hold it down. It's more like a bazooka. It's poof, there we go, fired off one. Let's fire off, poof, fire off one. Or maybe it's a teleporter, but you want a delay. Who knows what you can come up with? But I'd be interested to see what you do with it. Okay, thank you very much for watching. And again, thank you so much to Gal Sergei. Uh, if you see them around on the internet, give them some love. Without them, I would not have had time to get this out today. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Take care. Bye-bye.